The Nigerian police has expressed worry over the increasing cases of rape and gender-based violence being experienced nationwide. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, while speaking to newsmen in Abuja, says over 700 cases of rape were reported between January and May 2020. The police chief, while blaming the increasing cases on the COVID-19 restrictions put in place to tackle the coronavirus pandemic, urged the public to report rape cases to law enforcement agencies so as to help bring an end to the menace. It has come to the public view now that um, because of the COVID-19 restriction, um, the, we have surge in the cases of uh, rape and gender-based violence. Uh, the Nigeria police so far from January January 2020 till May 2020, we've recorded um, about 717 rape incidents that were reported across the country, and about uh, 799 suspects were so far arrested, with 631 of them uh, the case is com uh, conclusively investigated and charged to court. And we have so far about 52 cases that are remaining under investigation. And we'll call on every member of, uh, I mean, every Nigerian that has or comes across any victim of sexual offenses, of rape, or gender-based violence to quickly report to law enforcement uh, agents. Because keeping it without reporting it will give um, room for the perpetrators to continue to commit the offenses. It is a very wicked offense. It is a very serious offense. It is very wicked of an individual to engage in rape or defilement. We're now joined by political analyst, Reverend Dakbo Daramore. Thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, quickly, before we talk about other issues, what's your reaction to the increasing number of case, um, rape cases across Nigeria? Well, it's, it's, unfor it's unfortunate uh, because um, I think the biggest challenge we have as, as a nation, which is not happening to us alone, but it's happening globally, is because um, there, is no, there is no serious enforcement of whatever laws, how, how lax the laws may be, but we don't have proper laws that uh, I could say are punitive enough to take care of um, the experiences we are having. And for me, until we have um, very strict or stringent you know, laws that can take care of this situation, I think we may still continue to witness this kind of situation in mean, cases. Uh, uh, some would, some, that some would many... argue that it's not a question of law, but the implementation of the said law that is uh, the issue. Would you um, argue with that? No, I would argue with that because implementation, yes, is, a, is another stage. But for me, the nature of the laws in itself or in themselves is not you know, sufficient enough. Because, okay, I'll give an example. When, when rape takes place, how many, how many, are we sufficient to investigate rape cases? When you, walk, when you walk into a police station or into a hospital and you, and you say you're raped, okay, do we have rape kits? You know, where people, you know, do you have, do you have you know, records, you know, proper records? Because most times you go into hospitals and they don't have rape kits to even test and to even preserve, you know, um, whatever kits that, that they even have. You know, they are tampered with, you know, and all of that. That is one stage. The other stage also is the fact that at the end of the day, you'll find out that, you know, there's even trust issues. You walk into a police station, you report, and even the officers on duty won't even take you seriously. They don't even take the issue seriously. So... When you look at the system itself, the system does not support people coming up to even report that they have been raped. 
because the process of getting these issues investigated between the moment you report and the time even the cases are meant to be investigated, a lot of things have gone down and there is no, there is no trust issues. And there is no, there is no, like I said before, even the rape kits are not even sufficient and they are not even properly preserved. So what, the moment they are tampered with, it becomes you know, a different story entirely. So for me, it's, it's not just about the implementation of the law, but we need to develop you know, a process, a, a process where people can walk in and they can report that they have been raped. And from the moment you report the cases and the moment the cases are investigated, because in all of these issues, investigation is key. And that is where a lot of things are tampered with and a lot of things are messed up. I'm, I'm sorry to use that word, but that's the truth. So if we don't have proper investigation, then many of these cases will never see the light of the day in right. terms of prosecution. In, in, um, because of time, uh, let's uh, see if we can uh, push in other issues. As a political analyst, what is your impression of what is playing out in a Doe state as it stands? The, the a Court of Appeal have affirmed the suspension of Adam Soshimole just as the governor of that state um, leaves the party. Where does that leave the entire governorship election uh, process? Well, I, I think, I think, you know, if you, look at, if you look at what is going on, already the deed has been done when it comes to the governor of Edo State. I mean, of course, this, this fight had, had, had taken too long between the governor and, and you know, his predecessor in office, who is the, who is the chairman or supposedly the suspended you know, chairman of the party, national chairman of the party. And so whatever has happened now, we knew that, you know, the moment uh, Eze, Pastor Ezeyamu was brought on board, we knew that what the gov what what you know, uh, the the actors wanted was to bring somebody who they felt was a strong candidate who could knock off you know the governor in terms of uh, political popularity. Now, of course, we know it's power tussle, and you know everybody wants to entrench himself in office as a new godfather, because on one side, yes, you know um, Adams or Sherman uh, was giving the governor problems as a godfather himself, but at the same time, the governor himself, in trying to entrench himself as, you know, the new godfather, has shown that he can be ruthless also. Look at what has happened in the, last, I mean, in the House of Assembly, in the State House of Assembly in Edo State, where 14 lawmakers, even up to date, have not been, you know, um, you know uh, uh, have not been sworn in into office as elected, you know, officials of the state. That is an act that it can be it can be traced to the governor himself. So the two of I mean, when you look at the two parties, they are they are they both are fault. But for me, the the national chairman before he was suspended has, has done what he feels was a good job in in kicking the governor out. In, 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 he's not going to be allowed to contest on the platform of the party. And he saw that he saw that handwriting on the wall, and he took what he felt was the best decision to resign from the party. Let me extend it to the fact that whatever you now see the national chairman going through, um, in terms of the suspension, you know, um, from the appeal court affirming the suspension, majorly it has to do with other other people within the party. Don't forget that Roti Miakedolu, the current governor of Ondo State, has his own issues also because within his own within his own state. Whatever has happened to the, gov to the governor of the state, mo most likely could affect him also, could happen to him. And so that is why everybody is fighting this polit political survival. Everybody needs to survive. All right. Don't um, forget it happened in Lagos State, uh, Governor Dapo uh, Ambode. Ambode lost out. And so that extended to uh, Obaseki now. Obaseki also is losing out. And it's in, it's in the use of direct direct primaries that right. many, many of them are losing out. Okay, let, let's, so let's look at the other also issues. Is going to own and already is suspecting that this may happen to him also. Uh, let's look at other issues arising from it. What are the options for the governor? The PDP itself, while some groups are saying they will welcome him with open arms, others are saying there are only already people who have bought the tickets to um for the position of the governorship candidate for the PDP 
Are there other options outside the PDP do you think um, the governor will take on? Or will he go with the popular opinion and go with the PDP? And what are the implications of that? No, the danger is that he knows very well that, you know, embracing PDP, like we have heard from Grapevine, uh, you know, from internal sources, the conditions that the PDP are putting forward to the governor are quite steep. It's a gamble. Because whether you like it or not, it's, about, it's the test of his own popularity. If the governor is popular, it doesn't matter the platform he goes, I'm sure that he could win. Don't forget what happened in Oshu State, when everybody felt that, you know, Demona Deleke did not have the political you know, capacity and the sagacity to win elections. And we saw what happened, that, you know, he almost kicked out the APC government and the candidate they brought on board, who is the current governor of Oshu State, and that is, you know, Governor Yitola. He almost lost the election. We remember the political master stroke that took place. It was Iyola Omishore that, you know, had to deliver his constituency for, for, for Oyetola to win the election. And you remember that when Omishore was going to, you know, put himself forward, he, he had to, you know, sit the APC, APC, APC people down and he gave them the conditions under which, you know, he would support them. And that is the problem that, you know, Obasaki is having with PDP now. PDP are taking a gamble. If they will take a gamble on him. I can see that happening. But what Obasaki may not accept from PDP is the conditions they will put him under. What, what, what are the conditions the you refer to? They want on the cabinet. Dakwa, for the purpose they of clarity, the... what are these stringent conditions you refer to? That, that, that's what I'm reading out, that they will tell him, what, what I'm hearing from our sources is that they are telling him that they may produce, they may have to give him the deputy governor, so he may have to drop Comrade Philip Shwaibu as deputy governor, and don't forget Shwaibu has stepped out, you know, to stake his own political future with him. So that is a, that's quite a huge one. So will he now lose out totally? That's number one. They will tell him, they will give him a certain number of commissioners, and special advisors, will he, will he drop all these commissioners and special advisors who have will also stake their political future with him? So, you know, it, it's a whole lot of, you know, conditions that they are putting forward to him. But like I said, if the governor is smart enough, even though I believe that this camp is not confident, I can tell you that also because I have a lot of friends, you know, with him also as we speak, what is pointing out is that if the governor is not popular enough, then it doesn't matter which party he joins, is that Yamu will win. But if the governor is popular enough and he has done enough to win the minds of the people, it doesn't matter what platform he contest, contest on, whether it is PDP or ADC or ADP or any party or Labour. I believe that the governor has the capacity to win if he feels that he has done enough. But my own political calculation from where I am today, I think the governor's camp is not confident. I don't see him accepting the conditions of PDP, but if he does accept the conditions of PDP, I mean, it's very easy, like you said before, if people have paid money to buy forms and all of that, for many of them, they can be bought off. They can be promised many things, and then, you know, this, this is politics. It's a game of numbers, the game of, you know, what is on the table for me. Wow. So if he's able to right. convince them, and if they believe he has what it takes, you know, then it's a, it's a matter of political popularity. Uh, quite a situation we have there in Edo State. We'll definitely be uh, getting back in touch with you as the days uh, progress to, uh, you know, get your reaction on whatever happens. Thank you so much for your Thank interview you. this morning. It is my pleasure. Thank you so much.